Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Andrew, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Andrew. So again, Andrew, thank you so much. And today, Andrew's going to handle the intro for me. Ahoy, Mitch. Uh, this is Andrew from Pennsylvania, and for my deck tech, I'd like to dedicate it to my awesome friend Camille. Thanks for the dedication, Andrew. Hey, Mitch. So for my deck tech, I want to see Ifara, God of the Polis, as my general. And let's focus on Flash, some fun Enter the Battlefield stuff, and lots of card drawing. So like Camille said, today's deck tech is going to be built around Ifara, God of the Polis, focusing on Flash, some exciting card draws, some ETBs, yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. Afara God of the Polis is a 6-5 indestructible god for 2 white blue. She has its longitude devotion of white and blue is less than 7, Afara isn't a creature. And at the beginning of each upkeep, if you had another creature into the battlefield under your control last turn, draw a card. So first off, like essentially all the other Theros gods, Afara is very hard to deal with. She's essentially an indestructible enchantment that is sometimes a creature. So yeah, she's probably going to stay in play a long time. And while she's in play, she's going to be generating you an absurd amount of card advantage with this deck. Again, the way she is worded, she says, at the beginning of each upkeep, if you had another creature enter the battlefield under your control last turn, draw a card. So Afara triggers on everyone's upkeep, not just your own. And if you're able to have a creature come into play on every single turn, including your opponent's turns, well, that's an absurd amount of card advantage. In your typical game of Commander, again, assuming that you've got three opponents currently, yeah, that's going to be what? Four cards every single time around the table? So focusing on being able to get a creature in play whenever we want is a big thing for this deck. And like Camille mentioned, Flash is definitely a mechanic that can really help out this deck. So let's start things off by talking about some fantastic Flash creatures. First off, we're going to be utilizing some fantastic Flash creatures like White Mane Lion and Stone Cloaker. White Mane Lion is just a 2-2 for 2 mana, but it has Flash, and when it enters the battlefield, you return a creature you control back to its owner's hand. And then Stone Cloaker is very similar, a 3-2 with Flash and Flying for 3 mana, and when it enters the battlefield, you return a creature you control to its owner's hand, and when it enters the battlefield, exile target card from a graveyard. Essentially, the most important thing about each of these cards is that we can play them whenever we want to. Again, we can play them on our opponent's turns, and when they come into play, we can bounce a creature creature back to our hand, and most notably, they can bounce themselves. So these are repeatable creatures that we can just keep getting back out into play, and then triggering Afara next turn. Next up, we've also got some flash creatures that can bounce another creature back to our hand with Jeskai Barricade, Deputy of Acquittals, and Neombia Steam Speaker. Again, each of these gives us the option to bounce back a creature, and again, they can't bounce themselves, but they can bounce something else, which maybe, again, is something that can bounce them back, too. On top of that, Neombi's actually going to gain us some life equal to the creature's converted mana cost that we end up bouncing back, which is just a nice extra benefit. Next up, though, we've got Quickling, Loyal Griff, and Vizier of Deferment. Quickling has, when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice unless you return another creature you control back to its owner's hand. And then Loyal Griff has Flash and Flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you may return another creature you control back to its owner's hand. And the Vizier Deferment is a bit more specific, but it can definitely help us out in certain situations. It has Flash, and when it enters the battlefield, it may exile target creature if it attacked or blocked this turn, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So we can use this offensively or defensively in combat, or we can really just utilize it to abuse an ETB. But we've also got some Flash creatures that can throw even more of a wrench into our opponent's plans with things like Draining Welk, Voracious Great Shark, and Mizian Meddler. Draining Welk has, when it enters the battlefield, counter-target spell, put X plus plus one counters on Draining Welk for X, that spell's converted mana cost. 
So again, we can flash this in to counter a spell, and also, and we'll get to that here in a bit, we've got ways to blink this so we can just keep countering spell after spell. Next up, Voracious Great Shark is a bit more specific. It has when it enters the battlefield, counter target artifact or creature spell. And then Missy and Meddler is specific, but in a different way. It says when it enters the battlefield, it may change the target of target spell or ability to Missy and Meddler. Next up, we've got a flash creature that can counter in a different way with Nimble Obstructionist. It says whenever you cycle it, counter target activated or triggered ability you don't control. And then Portal Mage can help us out during combat. It has, when it enters the battlefield during the Declare Attacker's step, you may reselect which player or Planeswalker target attacking creature is attacking. Basically, okay, swing at me with your giant creature, and now it's going to that player. Next up, we've also got some Angels with Flash that can really help us out with Restoration Angel and Glorious Protector. Restoration Angel has Flash and Flying, and when it enters the battlefield, it may exile target non-angel creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. So we can utilize this to help us use and abuse some ETBs of non-angels. But an angel ETB that can really help us out is Glorious Protector. It has, when it enters the battlefield, it may exile any number of non-angel creatures you control until Glorious Protector leaves the battlefield. So for this deck's purposes, this can essentially just be a repeatable mass blink effect for non-angels. And speaking of a repeatable blink effect, let's talk about Salt Skitter. It says, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, exile Salt Skitter, return Salt Skitter to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. Essentially, if our opponents have any creatures enter the battlefield during their turn, we are getting a free trigger on Afara because this is going to leave play and then come back into play. And yeah, with these cards, Afara can generate a ton of value throughout the game. And speaking of value... Let's move on and talk about the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig of this deck is Waybreak Hippocamp. Waybreak Hippocamp is a 2-2 enchantment creature horsefish, because that's a thing that costs 2 in a blue. It says whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card. Again, this deck is looking to, and definitely has the capability to, cast a creature on every opponent's turn. And again, when we do that, while also casting a creature or having one enter the battlefield on our turn as well, Afar is going to draw us four cards on a trip around the table. Wave Break Hippocamp gives us even more value, though, on top of that by saying, okay, if you cast a spell during your opponent's turns, congratulations, here's extra cards. So Wave Break Hippocamp can essentially double up our commander's value on our opponent's turns. So now by casting those same flash creatures on our opponent's turns, we are drawing seven cards in one trip around the table. Yeah, that's a completely new hand. You know, on top of the cards that we already have in our hand. So yeah, Waybreak Hippocamp can provide us a ton of value for what we already want to do with this deck, and that's why it's the Golden Pig. Next up though, we also have some other creatures that can help us with card advantage though with Watcher for Tomorrow, Wall of Omens, and Mold Drifter. Watcher for Tomorrow has Hideaway, and when it leaves the battlefield, we get the Exile card that we hit away back to our hand. Wall of Omens is just going to straight up draw us a card when it comes into play, and Mall Drifter is going to draw us two. Next up, though, there's Elite Guard Mage, which gains us three life and draws us one card. And then Cloud Blazer is somewhat similar. It's going to draw us two cards and gain us two life. So again, with these creatures that have ETBs that provide us card advantage, by flashing in those creatures that bounce them back to our hand, we can get that card advantage again. Or, you know, in an easier way, we can actually just blink them with something like Restoration Angel or some blink spells we're going to get to here in a bit. But next up, we even have a Flash creature that can help us with massive card draw with Thought Sponge. It enters the battlefield with a number of plus plus one counters on it equal to the greatest number of cards an opponent has drawn this turn. And when it dies, we draw cards equal to its power. So if an opponent drew a bunch of cards on their turn, we can take advantage of that by flashing this in, having a huge creature, and when it dies, getting a ton of card advantage out of it. Next up, though, let's talk about Archaeomancer and Scholar of the Ages, which can help us out in a different way. Archaeomancer has, when it enters the battlefield, return target insert a sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. And Scholar of the Ages is the exact same thing, but we're getting up to two target instant and or sorcery cards from our graveyard back to our hand. So yeah, these can recur as some key spells that can really help us out. And speaking of valuable ETBs, let's talk about Knight of the White Orchid and Boreas Charger. Knight of the White Orchid has, when it enters the battlefield, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a planes card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. And then Boreas Charger is somewhat similar. It has, when it leaves the battlefield, choose an opponent controls more lands than you. Search your library for a number of planes cards equal to the difference and reveal them, put one of them on the battlefield, tap the rest in your hand, then shuffle. Again, since we don't have access to green, chances are very high that an opponent is going to have more lands in play than us, so these can help us ramp, especially when we can abuse that ETB. Or I guess in Boris the Charger's case, an LTB. Next up, let's quickly go through some mana rocks that we're going to be utilizing with Everflowing Chalice, Prismatic Lens, Azori Signet, Marble Diamond, Sky Diamond, and Midnight Clock. But we also have a specific mana rock that can really help us out, so let's talk about Victory Chimes. Victory Chimes is going to untap during each other player's untapped step, and it taps for a colorless. Again, because we want to flash creatures in on every player's turn, this can basically just be a free one mana on every single turn. In a way, it's kind of like cost reduction for those creatures, but obviously we can utilize this for other things too. 
Speaking of cost reduction, there's Stinging Lionfish, which says whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, you may tap or untap target non-land permanent. So if we've got a Mana Rock in play, we can utilize this to untap that Mana Rock when we cast that spell. This can definitely give us even more value out of things that we already have in play. And speaking of that, let's talk about some blink spells like Clown Shift and Momentary Blink. Each of these can blink one of our creatures, and Momentary Blink can actually do this twice since we can flash it back for 3 in a blue. Again, we've got a lot of creatures with a lot of ETBs, and these can help us use and abuse them. Speaking of which, we also have some bigger blink spells with Ghostly Flicker, Displace, and Semester's End. Ghostly Flicker is going to exile two target artifact creatures and our lands we control and return those cards to the battlefield under our control. And then Displace does the exact same thing, but just for creatures. Semester's End does this essentially for our entire team. It says exile any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers you control. It's going to bring them back at the beginning of the next step, and for all the creatures, they get a plus plus one counter. Next up, we've got some repeatable blink spells, though, with Soul Herder and Miss Meadow Witch. Soul Herder says at the beginning of your end step, you may exile another target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So this is kind of like a Conjurer's Closet on a creature, and yay, yeah, free blink at the end of the turn, what's not to like? And then Miss Meadow Witch has paid two white, blue, exile target creature, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So yeah, for many of our ETBs, that price is going to be well worth paying. Next up, how about some utility creatures that can help us in different ways with Fiend Hunter and Reflector Mage? When Fiend Hunter comes into play, we exile another target creature, and when it leaves play, we return the exiled card back to the battlefield under its owner's control. So we can either temporarily exile one of our own creatures or one of our opponent's creatures. And then Reflector Mage can really hamper an opponent and says when it enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls back to its owner's hand. That creature's controller can't cast spells with the same name as that creature until your next turn. So yeah, have fun getting that creature back and holding onto them for another turn. And then Capnet's Monument helps us out in multiple ways. It says blue creature spells you cast cost one less to cast, and whenever you cast a creature spell, target creature and opponent controls does it untap during its controller's next untap step. So this can make it a lot easier to cast our blue creatures, and this can be especially impactful when we've got blue flash creatures to save mana on them throughout the game. And again, on top of that, this can really shut down tapped creatures. But next up, let's talk about some target removal spells with Crush Contraband, Return to Dust, and Aether Gale. Both Crush Contraband and Return to Dust can exile an artifact and an enchantment. And Aether Gale can bounce six target non-land permanents back to their owner's hands. And again, sometimes it might be beneficial for us to target some of our own things to get their ETBs again. And then we also have some board wipes that we can utilize with Cleansing Nova, Time Wipe, and Acroma's Vengeance. Cleansing Nova says choose one to destroy all creatures or destroy all artifacts and enchantments. And then Time Wipe has got to bounce a creature we control back to its owner's hand and then destroy all creatures. Acroma's Vengeance is flexible in that we can either destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments or just cycle it for three. Next up, we even have some creatures that can help us out with Angel of the Dire Hour, Stonehorn Dignitary, and Lavinia of the Tenth. Angel of the Dire Hour has Flash, and when it enters the battlefield, if we cast it from our hand, we exile all attacking creatures. And then Stonehorn Dignitary has, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent skips their next combat phase. So yeah, this can be a really fun one to blink over and over again. And then Lavinia the Tenth has, when it enters the battlefield, detained each non-land permanent your opponent's controlled converted mana cost for or less. Basically, detaining means that until your next turn, those permanents can't attack or block, and their abilities can't be activated. Finally, we've also got some value generating ETBs and LTBs with Revlark, Sun Titan, and Narmeha. Revlark has, when it leaves the battlefield, return to two target creature cards with power two less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it's got an evoke cost of five and a white. Sun Titan has, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent card with mana value three less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And Narmeha has, when it enters the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. So, Narmeha can double up on the effectiveness of a lot of our instants and sorceries, especially certain ones that may or may not go infinite with her. Because Ghostly Flicker plus Narhumeha equals infinite mana, infinite ETBs of basically anything you want. So have fun if you want to win in that way. And speaking of winning, you can also finish off your opponents with a massive army from things like Ominous Seas, Sacred Mesa, and Mobilization. Ominous Seas says whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seas, and by removing eight foreshadow counters from it, you get an 8-8 blue cracking creature token. And then Sacred Mesa is an enchantment that makes you sacrifice it on your upkeep unless you sacrifice a Pegasus, but making a Pegasus is very cheap. Simply by paying one and a white, you get a 1-1 one, one white Pegasus creature token with flying onto the battlefield. And keep in mind, if you don't have your flash creatures around, this is a fantastic way to get a Forest Trigger on every turn just by paying for this and making another Pegasus. Or you can do a similar thing with Mobilization, which says Soldier Creatures have Vigilance, and by paying two and a white, put a 1-1 one, one white Soldier Creature token onto the battlefield. So have fun drawing cards and making tokens. Next up, let's talk about Wizard Class, which says you have no maximum hand size, and by getting it to level 2, you draw 2 cards, and by getting it to level 3, whenever you draw a card, you get a plus plus 1 counter on target creature you control. So this can turn one of our creatures into a deadly force in absolutely no time. And keep in mind that if Afara is a creature, she might be a great target for this because she is incredibly hard to deal with. So give her a massive amount of power, wipe the board, and swing through for lethal. 
Or you can drain your opponents out with Psychosis Crawler, which says whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. And of course, an effective win condition in this deck is Approach the Second Sun. Basically, when you cast this the first time, you gain 7 life and put it 7 from the top in your library, then when you get it back and cast it again, you win. And obviously with a deck like this that can draw a ton of cards, you can get it back in absolutely no time. But now that we've talked about every single non-land card in this deck, it's time to talk about the price. This deck is incredibly budget friendly with every single card outside of the commander being less than $1. So even though Afara God of the Polis is nearly a $5 card, the entire deck only costs $34 still. And keep in mind that that cost actually includes the cost of basic lands at $0.10 cents a piece, so if you already have those, you're going to be saving even more. And speaking of saving, you can save even more than that by buying heavily played or damaged cards on TCG Player to get that price down even further. Though, also make sure that you keep in mind that this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon where you live. And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you, so make sure you comment below and let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.